Hello and welcome back to Niche Tea, where we talk about drama happening in communities you may not be a part of. Last time we talked about the Apex Legends Global Series Finals for North America and how some hackers decided that was the perfect time, which it was, to show off some of the security weaknesses within the game. Today we're talking about the archaeology community, and I don't mean like fans of archaeology, I mean archaeologists. And it does have to do with publishing again, so if you enjoyed the physics episode, you'll like this one, I think. A lot has happened, so I'm going to take you through the chronological order of information as we received it. The whole story centers on a specific research paper which was published in October of 2023 called Geoarchaeological Prospecting of Ganung Padang Buried His Prehistoric Pyramid in West Java, Indonesia. Ganung Padang is an archaeological site in West Java, Indonesia, which has been studied pretty routinely for the last like 40 years or so at least and was originally discovered as early as like 1890 based on the records that it looks like we have. It's described as a series of five man-made terraces that go up the side of a hill to the top of it and that hill used to be a volcano. And in 2014, it was declared a national site area for Indonesia, so there's definitely a lot of research going on there. The article's primary author is an Indonesian geologist that matters for later, named Danny Hillman Natawidyaya, along with a number of other co-authors who did the research with him and wrote it up with him. However, he is the primary face of this. Now, when this article was originally published, it made a lot of waves in the archeological community because a lot of people had a lot of feelings about it. Not from what I understand with the exact methodology of what he did, like his actual methods of dating and digging and taking samples and that type of stuff, but the conclusions that he made from them. Sorry, it started raining. Now, I probably don't have to say this, but I am not an archeologist or a geologist or anything relevant to this. So if you are and anything I'm about to say is wrong, please, for the love of God, correct me. But I'm gonna try and summarize what these key issues archeologists had with this paperwork. First is that Natawariaya is claiming that there is literally a pyramid underneath like in the mountain and that like we're seeing, I guess the side of it, um, I think is what he's trying to say, but that there's literally a pyramid in there. The man-made structures do not just live on top of the side of the mountain. They literally go inside the mountain. And then taking that as a preface that he understood to be true, he then dated the stuff around that, like that layer of earth and found it to be like thousands and thousands of years old. I've heard anywhere from like 10 to 20 or more thousand years old, which would make the, the oldest pyramid ever made. Like it's a big deal. For the pyramid piece, he shows different like sections that he took of different parts of the mountain where he did like cut-ins to see what it looked like at different depths. And he shows that pretty far down, there's like vertical stacking of rocks in a way that looks from his perspective to be very clearly intentionally laid with what he considers to be mortar in between. So it looks like brickwork almost, but like old school with stones. I'm heavily simplifying this. He also cites evidence he sees of what he considers to be like weathering, you know, like rounding of stones and stuff that would happen from it being outside and getting hit by the elements over time. And he found what he says is a old school like knife made out of stone that indicates again, like archeological value. Like this is a man made tool. And he found it, I think pretty deep in one of the deeper layers. There's more to it but I'm out of my depth those are kind of the key points he's like this is a man-made structure hello this is Friday Caroline wearing the other dress I got on sale this week I completely forgot to include why archaeologists disagree with the conclusion that this is a pyramid and basically it sums up to volcanoes can cause that same type of rock stacking in addition to the other things pointed out by Nata Wijaya, they disagree that any of this is evidence of anything artificially man-made and that it's just a reflection of it being a volcano so then taking that as a premise, he moves on to dating. The way this is done in archaeology is via a method called carbon dating. Carbon dating, put too simply, is you take a section of material and it should be ideally like a mixed section. It should have like bone and, you know, soil and other stuff in there. And then for all of the different stuff in there, you measure the amount of certain carbon isotopes present in them. And basically that can tell you how old it is because we know how much that decays over time. The reason you want a cross section is because shit gets mixed up down there. We think it just like goes down flat and like it's like this, it's not. Shit, it moves all kinds of around. So if you pull a bunch of different stuff, especially different types of materials, and they all come back with fairly similar carbon dating, then you can feel much more confident about that result. Whereas if it's more homogenous, you're far more likely to just hit a patch of something that was like from another time that just kind of moved up this way and you accidentally hit it and then you have the wrong date. So my understanding, and again, not a professional, is that the problem with what Nadawiyaya did is that he took 
a bunch of, did like columns, like you take like a circular thing and put it all the way down into the ground, pull the whole cross section up and then pick out sections and say like, this is this many meters down and let's carbon date this and then the same thing down. But everything they came up was very homogenous and my understanding is mostly soil. Soil is to my understanding, the worst thing to carbon date in terms of reliability. But also going into the dating, as I mentioned, he takes as a premise that this was a man-made structure in this place. He thinks he's already proven that. But from an archeological standpoint, they're looking at them totally separately. They're like, okay, you think you proved there was a pyramid here. We don't necessarily agree. But then when you go to the carbon dating, we have to go from like a blank slate and we don't see any what's called context in these samples. Meaning there's no indication in the samples by themselves that there was any humans around during these times. So like, even if your carbon dating is accurate, who cares? There's no bones, there's no like fragments of stuff. He got one knife and it wasn't his carbon dating samples. And there were also allegedly things found during the digs that don't align with the conclusions made in the paper. For example, a coin that very clearly came from the 1800s was allegedly like 11 meters down, but he just didn't include that in the paper, apparently. Lots of archeologists have gone into detail talking about why this never should have been published and breaking it down much more thoroughly and accurately than I just did, I'm sure. One I particularly recommend that I enjoyed was a YouTube video by Archaeology by Flint Dibble. Dr. Dibble has a series where he pretty much does peer reviews of paper on video so you can just see them go through it. In this one he brings in Indonesian archaeological specialists. Remember Natawid Yaya is a geologist not an archaeologist. They talk about everything I just talked about. Also the fact that that knife apparently they don't believe that that was a knife. They literally think it's just a rock. It doesn't look at all like any of the knives that actually existed at the time. Also like can we define what a pyramid is to start? Like this doesn't look like a pyramid even a step pyramid it doesn't match that at all and even to start off the two indonesian archaeologists are just like yeah we don't have pyramids anyway real late so what happened? The larger archeology span community has basically been ringing alarm bells on this for months. And finally, last Friday, Wiley, the publisher of the paper, put out a retraction on it. Now retractions happen, but this was a particularly big deal because when this was published, it went everywhere. Before this, the oldest pyramids known to man were right around 5,000 years old. This thing is saying at least double that up to like 30,000 years old and in a totally different region. This news spread like wildfire. The media picked it up. People were talking about it left and right. It got a Netflix special. So a lot of archaeologists now are like, cool for the retraction. Can you please be louder about it? There is a ton of misinformation that's still out there and this retraction isn't making nearly the waves that the actual publishing did. And then earlier today, the 21st, Natawijaya put out a basically response to the whole thing saying that he and all the other authors fully disagree with the retraction. And the really interesting thing is that he also posted supposedly all of the email exchanges between him and the representative at Wiley who was talking to him about the fact that it was being reviewed for retraction. This email chain is insane. It starts at the beginning of December, Wiley reaches out and is like, hey queen, they, we got problem. Atwajaya is like, is this an ethical concern? And Wiley's like, no, it's not about that. We just, you know, we need to go back over. We've got these criticisms coming in and they seem pretty well founded. Natawajaya is like, we went through a nine month review process what? Why is this coming up now? Fair, to be honest. Wiley is the biggest idiot in this. What are y'all doing over there? They then go back and forth for the next month with Wiley saying that they need responses to the critiques and Natawidiaya saying, we need more specific critiques. I don't understand what the specific problem is. I'll agree that what Wiley allegedly sent through to him didn't seem super helpful from like a critique response standpoint. It was basically like, this is bad. But I know he's seen the commentary from the rest of the community. So he's got the detail he needs. If I can like one tenth of the way understand what they're talking about, he can understand it enough to summarize what those issues are and respond to them back to Wiley. He responds basically reaffirming what they've already provided and saying that their methods were good, et cetera, et cetera. But again, it doesn't really speak to the conclusions you made coming out of that. As you are aware, Wiley disagreed and retracted. Wiley flat out admits that they didn't have the right people peer review it and that if they had, they wouldn't have published it, which makes them yet again, the worst people in this story. Go read the emails, by the way, watching them escalate is so funny. By the end, they're like, hello, thank you so much for responding. Go fuck yourself. And now Nato Ajaya has pivoted to saying that he is being suppressed because the archeology span mafia doesn't like his findings or something. And the last sentence Nato Ajaya said to Wiley is the most memeable thing I've ever read. This whole thing was a treat. 